Now that we've gone over the hows and whys with a proof of contradiction, let's go with a single proposition or single statement, and then we'll get into something that's a little bit more complex here. <laughs> you know I was going to give you the list, but let's go over the example. Well, actually, you know what? There is, a, there is a difference here when we get into this portion by contradiction, and it's brought up in the previous video, is that we're looking for, remember, this is with an and. So as soon as we see a, a not or, or a negated or something false, then we've, we've got it. So that, that's the important part about this. So, so in this very sing, simple and single propositional example, what we're trying to do is find that there's no largest prime number, which you and I know prime numbers go infinitely, so that's not the case. But, so again, following the exact steps that we have up here, and again, three and four are always going to be the more interesting ones. Now, notice, by the way, there's not five and six on this one because we're not doing some other things because there's less to work with, frankly, in this one. But anyway, so number one, assume that there is a largest prime number called P of N. Then number two, hence, we can list all the primes of two, three, and so on up to P of N in the form of this. Now, again, where did I get this from? Well, frankly, that's the definition of all the primes. And again, you know that there's going to be a prime, and then there's probably going to be one more, so we added one more. But also, I happen to, as I'm looking this up, find another theorem that either R is prime or there is a smaller prime that divides R. So that's a big deal on really kind of defining what we need everything for primes in order to do the rest of our material. So in part three, which is the work, start tackling towards a P is false or the not P is false. None of the prime numbers on the list are divided by C. So four, this contradicts the assumption that there is a largest prime. And then number five is basically finaling up, finaling up. Therefore, there is not a largest prime number and seal it with our approval. Now, there's other examples of this that I would like you to explore, too. This is the one straight from the book, not, a, not crazy about this one. So explore some other ones, but again, be very, very careful. This whole thing is just P. There's not a Q. There's, there's no way I can convert that from an if and, or sorry, this, if then, in order to do this exact type of statement that we've got here. So be careful which ones you're looking up as you see other examples of this particular one for contradiction. Here's an example of, again, a single proposition using contradiction that, frankly, I like a lot better. But the bad part is there's a lot of terminology in this. There's a lot of square root of twos and everything else like that. So it can be, again, a little bit convoluted on what we're trying to get out of it. So just a heads up when I go over this one. So let's take a look at the question here. Use a proof by contradiction to give a proof that the square root of two is irrational. Now, notice I underline that because part one is flipping it, frankly, and that is that we have a square root of two is rational. So again, I, I can guarantee you that we better look up rational and come up with a couple of different things, and that's what's gonna happen here in a moment. So number two, there is, then there exists integers a and b that are square root of two with a divided by two and where b is zero, and again, that's the common part of understanding what a rational is. We've actually gone over that type of problem already. So this, again, did not come from the heavens. It came from our ability to research exactly what a rational is. And we're going to use those equations, as you'll see here in a little bit, on going ahead and, frankly, solving it so, well, we find out that there's a problem. Let's put it that way. So well, let's go into it. So there's a couple of interesting things on this one is that notice again, I'm trying to get it into the form of frankly, we're A and B and that makes things interesting when we get down to the real nitty gritty of this. But for right now, that's all I'm trying to do is move it into the forms and have the side basically not have uh, the square root portion of it. I end up having a squared, and a squared is equal to two times some integer because b happens to be an integer, because remember, again, from the definition from what we have in rational numbers, then b squared is an integer. Then once we start doing some other items here, we start our substitution of 2c equals a, where c is b squared, and a c resides as an element within integers. Therefore, it must be even because b, which was even, once squared is, again, then another even number. And then the same thing for a1a equals c2c. Uh, 
And that's where this comes into play for some integer. We're going to start using that type of notation to find exactly the same thing for b squared. So again, b squared is even using the definition of an even integer. So then again, b must be even as well. So yeah, sin, and notice at the end, at the very bottom, we, since both a and b are even, that both a and b can be divided by 2. This contradicts our assumption that a and b have no common factors, which a prime doesn't have. So there's our contradiction. And there we put our stamp of approval at the end. So notice, a lot of work on this one, a lot, because again, we had two different items that we really had to worry about when getting to solve this. And again, it's from the definition of a rational number, which you and I have done before. A lot of research in this one just to solve this particular example.